Yes, good, good morning learners and welcome to my uh, series here. Where I'll be taking you through the uh, organic chemistry division. Now, um, we are going to have a, a question in paper two, uh, which is on flow chart, which is on flow chart. And the question A is study the flow chart below and answer the questions that follow. Study the flow chart below and answer the questions that follow. So my first question here will be a paper to like and we see what uh, we are expected to do. Now, so uh, let us study the flow chart before we get to the questions. Now, uh, my flow chart here, you can see it is starting from an alkene. This is a thin. Our thin here, um, we have two chemical properties being tested. One, in one chemical properties is leading to the formation of ethanol. You can see the OH here, uh, which is actually a functional group of alkanols. Therefore, it is leading us to ethanol. Then number two, it is leading us to the alkanes. Remember the alkanes here. This is an alkene. This is an alkene. This is ethene. This is ethane. Two properties here being tested. Now we go to the alkanols here. Now with alkanols here, again we have two properties here that, has been, that have been tested here. One of the chemical properties here is leading uh, us to the formation of alkanoic acid. Alkanoic acid. Eh? is leading us to the formation of alkanoic acid and then the other one here is we are reacting with a metal and alkanols reacting with a metal and getting double now the other one here that we are testing here is the chemical properties of alkanoic acids now this one here we are testing one how does it react with sodium hydroxide and then number two how does it react with an alkanol uh -huh. So, a reaction between alkanoic acid and an alkanol there, uh, and then how does it react with sodium hydroxide there? And there we, we, we are there. Then, from there, the compound form when you react sodium hydroxide with alkanoic acid here uh, can react with the soda line and we get Z. We get Z. So, basically, that is our for chart. Now from the project here, one of the things that you need to be very careful about are the chemical properties. They are the chemical properties uh, for each of the homologous series that we do have. Very, very much important. You can see actually, and which I'll be able to see here, the much of it is about the chemical properties there, uh, the, the, the conditions that we require for the process to take place, and maybe the processes involved and so on and so forth. Now let's get to the questions here. Now, uh, A, we are talking about an alkene, which is a thin. This is actually a thin. You can be able to tell that uh, by the fact that it has a formula CNH2N. Now here, uh, a thin here is forming ethanol. Now this process by which an alkene forms an ethanol, we are going to call it hydration. We are going to call it hydration. We are going to call it hydration. Now, it's important maybe I mention a, a few things here. Now, when we are using conch sulfuric acid here, we are going to have ethyl hydrogen sulfate. We are going to form ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Now, from ethyl hydrogen sulfate, uh, a vinyl hydrogen sulfate reacts with the water eh, in a process that we call hydrolysis so that we get ethanol and of course the comb sulfate 6 acid uh, will be recovered, the one that we use there. Therefore, uh, uh, in this particular case here, if we are using comb sulfate 6 acid here, the process could also be called hydrolysis. Get note of that, very important here. Hydration or hydrolysis. Now, let's get to B. Now, B here is a process uh, where we are getting ethanoic acid from ethanol. Now, um, 
what you realize here is that I'm adding an oxygen. If you try to look at the, the alkanols here, we have one oxygen in an alkanoic acid here, like an alkanoic acid in spectral case here. There are two oxygens here. And therefore, we are adding oxygen. Our oxygen has been added across there. And therefore, the process, we are going to call it oxidation. We are going to call it oxidation. Now, then, let's go to C. Now, uh, process C, it's important to know that uh, why here, when you add sodium hydroxide here uh, to an alkanoic acid, we all know that acid-base reaction gives us a salt. Now, the salt here uh, basically will be formed when this sodium replaces hydrogen, and therefore I'll get a salt called sodium ethanoid. Now, sodium alkanoids, sodium alkanoids react with soda lime to get an alkyl. Now the process by which we get an alkane uh, from sodium alkanoid, we are going to call it decarboxylation. Decarboxylation. And therefore that should be the process. Decarboxylation. Just get rid of that. Then D. Let's think about D. Now we can see why a D is here. Now D is uh, uh, we are trying to look at these chemical properties of alkanoic acids that uh, alkanoic acids can react with alkanols. Alkanoic acids can react with alkanols. We shall be able to see this one here uh, where this hydrogen here in the alkanoic acid here is able to combine or is able to react with the OH from the alkanol and what we have here is a nester plus water. Now the process here, um, the process uh, by which the process uh, by which uh, the, the, this reaction occurs to get substances here, we are going to call it esterification. Esterification. This is a process by which uh, the, al uh, the alkanoic acids react with the alkanols so that we are going to form a nester uh, plus water. And then finally, here, finally. We have the E in that particular question there. We have process E. Let's have a look at E now. Now E here is a reaction between an acid here and a base. So this one here from I think from a form one work, uh, we can tell that this one is neutralization. This is an, an acid base reaction. Neutralization. And of course, what we call it neutralization is because the product formed from the reaction are actually neutral. In other words, we have the salt which is normally neutral and we have water. That's what we're talking about. Now, let me take you through, now we think about the conditions necessary for the processes above. The processes above and we're going to have uh, the step A. Now with the step A, we are just going to have a case where we can have phosphoric acid and we also have sulfuric six acid. Let me let's take, just take one of them. Uh, when you're using phosphoric acid here, so you're going to use phosphoric acid, phosphoric five acid catalyst. This is the condition: the presence of conk, uh, pres presence of phosphoric five acid catalyst. Um, then we are also going to have a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. Temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and we can also have 60 atmospheres pressure. Look at that. 60 atmospheres pressure. Now in this particular case here, this is the reaction that I've just said here is hydration. This one is hydration. If I was using comp sulfuric 6 acid here, uh, of course, I would talk about the conditions, presence of conch six acid here. I would also mention about a temperature, a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius, 180 degrees Celsius. Now, let's get to B of this, and I want to have, uh, now B here is uh, a reaction where involving or where and the noic acid is being formed from an alkanol, in other words, that is, um, uh, this is actually 
Ethan. No. Now the 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 it's important to make to mention here that what I require uh, to oxidize my ethanol to uh, my ethanol acid is actually an oxidized agent. Here we're going to have um, the acidified uh, potassium uh, manganese seven, acidified potassium manganese seven. This is actually the reagent uh, that we uh, are going to have here. Or we can as well use an oxidizing agent like potassium bicarbonate. Potassium bicarbonate. These two can be used here. Now, what are the conditions necessary for this? Uh, the temperature I'm going to have heat here. I'm going to have a heat. Now, you in this particular case, of course, uh, you may realize here that uh, the boiling point of ethanoic acid here is about 100. And 19 and that means of course that I may require temperature about that but it's not very specific here uh, it's not very I cannot have specific we can just have the heat uh, presence of heat here um, uh, uh, now maybe to what I can just mention here about is uh, the, 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 the 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 I'm going to use the potassium uh, uh, the potassium uh, magnet 7 and potassium bichromate ought to be acidified. In other words, I'm going to have the presence of hydrogen ions. Presence of hydrogen ions here. Uh, uh, presence of hydrogen ions. Uh, that is the potassium magnesium seven and potassium bichromate ought to be acidified. That's what we're talking about. Now let's get to the D part of the question. What are some of the conditions that we require? For the formation of D, uh, for the formation of D. Now, um, uh, sorry, for for the process D. Uh, now, so the D here is actually process D is actually esterification. So, the other, in other words, what we are asking here, what are the conditions necessary for esterification process to take? What are some of the conditions? Now, for you to form a nester, you require the following presence of conch sulfuric 6 acid, that is one of them. Um, the other one that you may require is heat. You may require heat. Uh, not so that I here, we don't, we don't mention the specific temperature. We may not uh, measure the specific uh, temperature. We just require to warm, and that the reaction is actually able to take a uh, place. Now think about E. Think about E. Now, uh, now uh, think about uh, E. Um, I beg your pardon here. This one here may not require any conditions. Uh, you may not require uh, this kind of in, in reactions here. Let's think about F. Let's think about F. Now, what are some of the conditions that I require uh, to form F? What are some of the conditions that I require to form F? Now, when I'm forming my F, when I am forming my F, uh, now F is actually hydrogenation. And it's important to mention that this one here, uh, we find the application of this process even in the hardening of oils. When uh, oils have been converted to fats, we can simply have the hydrogen and then we're going to have uh, specific uh, uh, conditions uh, so that we're able to form fat. Now, what are these conditions that I require during hydrogenation? I'm going to require a catalyst. I call it nickel catalyst. That one, I'm going to require this. I'm going to require nickel uh, catalyst. Uh, at the same time, I may require a temperature of 150 uh, to 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, a temperature, a temperature of uh, 150 to 250 degrees Celsius. Of course, that's what we are talking. Now, let's get to another question here, where. We are going to look at how we are going to write equations for each of the chemical properties that we've mentioned about. Now, our question here, let's write the equation for the formation of W. Now, you try to look at W here. This is a reaction 
between ethanol and a reactive metal like sodium. Now, what happens with this particular reaction here? Uh, we, so we're going to start there with W here. So I'm going to have my ethanol here, CH3, CH2, OH. The reaction of ethanol with the sodium, just as we see it in water, just as we see it in water, what normally happens is the sodium represses the hydrogen. This sodium represses this hydrogen, and when it represses this hydrogen here, now hydrogen, this hydrogen atom now will form hydrogen gas and this is what we're talking about therefore we're going to have here c h3 c h2 o and then we're going to have n a it's n a which has replaced hydrogen and then my hydrogen here will form when two of these either molecules are used of course you're going to have two hydrogen atoms being produced and the two atoms will be able to form a hydrogen gas so basically this is, this is what we're talking about you're going to have that now of course this is a liquid this is a solid this is uh, aqueous and we have the gas that is what we're talking about now the compound formed here is also important to note here uh, we are going to call it sodium ethoxide look at that sodium ethoxide sodium ethoxide yes you can actually be able to see here that we have this oxygen therefore it is a kind of an oxide the kind of oxide and therefore we're going to call it sodium ethoxide now of course if a potassium metal will be used in this particular case again, it will give us potassium ethoxide. Potassium ethoxide. If I would be using something like propanol, if I use something like propanol here, I would get sodium propoxide. Look at that and how we name them here. Look at the prefix. Look at the prefix for the alkane. For example, prop for three carbons and I just need to add oxide therefore propoxide if I use butanol it will be something like sodium but oxide but oxide and so on and so forth so basically this is what we are talking about now uh, having said that let's also look at the X now now if you try to look at X here I did mention here that an, an alkanoic acid uh, reacts with an alkanol in presence of conch sulfuric 6 acid which serves as a catalyst and of course warming to give us an ester to give us an ester now and uh, we need to know here one of the physical properties of esters is that they have a pleasant smell they have a pleasant smell and uh, this is where uh, the application, where it finds its applications even in the manufacture of perfumes and so on and so forth. Therefore, uh, these esters, how, how are they formed? How are they formed? Now, the reaction or the formation of esters basically here um, will involve two things here. As far as the alkanoic acid is concerned here, it will involve the hydrogen, this repressible hydrogen. This repressible hydrogen in the functional group COOH, this H here, will be involved. And also the functional group, as far as the alkanol is concerned, the main reactant will be the OH in the alkanol. So let's see how it will be like. Now, so we're going to have here, I'm going to have my ethanoic acid, CH3, 
COOH. This is ethanoic acid. I'm going to have my ethanol. Now, let us try, because what you just said here is that the hydrogen and the OH are reacting. They are reacting. So I'm going to rearrange this formula here. I'm going to rearrange this formula here so that the OH appears on this side. Therefore, I'm going to rearrange it so that I start with the OH. I start with the OH. Look at that. I start with the OH followed by CH2. Look at that. CH2 and finally CH3. I've, I've just rearranged. I've just rearranged and this one here is acceptable. I've just rearranged here. Get note of that. Now, what does it form? What does it form? Now, see, watch here what I'm talking about. Now, the hydrogen part in the alkanoic acid here will combine with the OH in the alkanol. The hydrogen reacts with the OH in the alkanol and obviously a H plus OH will give us H2O which is water and then what remains, uh, what remains of this one that reacts here will actually be as follows. We're going to have the CH3, I'm going to have COO, look at that. And then of course this one has been eliminated I'm going to have CH2, CH2, and I'll have the CH3. Look at that. Mm. And of course, the H and the OH, we just see here that it's going to form water. It's actually going to form water. I've just mentioned here that you may require some conditions like Kong, a sulfuric six acid here, and you may require some warmth. Or some heat fair uh, for this reaction to take a place for this reaction to place now this is what we actually call ester this one forms in the homologous series that we call ester and how are we going to name this ester how are we going to name this ester we're going to name it uh, 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 simply from this side here we name from our right CH2CH3 or if you like it here, this is also C2H5. C2H5, we all know that that one is an alkyl. Now, when you have an alkane, you subtract one hydrogen. An alkane minus one hydrogen uh, gives you an alkyl. Now, this alkyl here has two carbons, and therefore, we are going to call it ethyl. Get a note of that. We are going to call it ethyl. This is ethyl. And then, uh, from the acid, from the acid here, from the acid, when you remove the replaceable hydrogen, when you remove the replaceable hydrogen, my ion here, the ion here, when you remove your, when you remove your hydrogen, the ion here, uh, is actually an alkanoid. It is an alkanoid. Therefore, uh, this one here, remember we have two carbons, and therefore I'm going to call it ethanoid. Ethanoid. And that's a thing there. So it's, we call it ethyl ethanoid. And this one here falls under what we call esters. What we call esters here. Now this one here, as I've just mentioned here, is that it's going to have a pleasing smell. If you mistake symbols for this one here, um, we're going to have a liquid, a liquid there, uh, for even with a liquid here, and even with that it is aqueous. That's what we are talking about. That is what we are actually talking about. So basically this is what we call the ester. You can actually be able to see what we're talking about. If you're writing an ester, simply have the hydrogen part of the, the, the acid, just remove it, and then you have the other part from the alkanol. That's what we are talking about. Now, um, let's get to the other one there, and we look at the Z. We are going to look at the Z. We are going to look at the Z here. Now, Z here, we are looking at uh, the formation of Z 
and I think I did mention here that Z is an alkane. Z is an alkane. And uh, this one here is telling us how uh, you can be able to get Z from an alkanoic acid by having a first of all an alkanoid. You have an alkanoid sodium alkanoid, or we've just seen here the sodium. Uh, no, not really here. Uh, but let's see what we're talking about. So before we get to Z, before we get to Z, let's have a look at the Y so that we, so that we can get there. Now we get to Y first. Now why we mentioned that uh, Y is obtained from a neutralization reaction. The fact that ethanoic acid is an acid and sodium hydroxide is a base. An acid base reaction is called neutralization there. Now again here, let's see what uh, we are talking about here as far as the base, the acid base is concerned. Now as far as an acid base uh, reaction is concerned, an acid base reaction involves again the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. This is basically what an neutralization reaction involves. Now, that means here that this hydrogen ion here combines with OH and forms water and then my anion here, CH3COO, what you call ethanoid, uh, combine with my cation sodium ions, uh, sodium positive, and form sodium ethanoid. That's what we're talking about. Let's see what we're talking about. So we have the CH3COOH. I'm going to have sodium hydroxide. Now, so the salt formed from here, this is a salt, remember? You're going to have the CH3, COO. So the hydrogen part here taken by sodium, then the hydrogen and the OH, the hydrogen and the OH here will form what we call water. What we call water. That's what we're talking about. Now this one here is sodium ethanoid, exactly the salt. Is a soluble salt there. Uh, it's, uh, the, 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 it's aqueous, so the hydroxide is aqueous, and the noid acid is aqueous. That's what we're talking about. Now, this one here with two oxygens here, with two oxygens here, or when uh, we replace a hydrogen from an alkanoic acid, we get an alkanoid. Now, we're going to call this one sodium ethanoid. Look at that. Sodium ethanoid sodium ethanoid here and this one is uh, a salt this one is a salt as you can see it is aqueous and there you are now this is sodium ethanoid now sodium ethanoid actually is now uh, what will be able to react with the soda line and we are going to form an alkane we are going to form an alkane that's what we are talking about so let's see uh, how again Z will be formed Let's see how Z is formed. Uh, let's see how Z is formed from that. So with the Z, Z here now will be formed from the Y, uh, which I've just mentioned here. It is sodium ethanoid. I'm going to have soda lime. I'm going to have soda lime here. Now, the main reactant in this mixture here is actually sodium hydroxide. I want us to understand this one here because it's important here. Now, why do we require calcium oxide in this particular case? Now, uh, let me mention here that this reaction requires us to be or the sodium, these two here, the sodium uh, hydroxide here, they are supposed to be dry. You can see they're supposed to be dry. And to keep the mixture dry, remember sodium hydroxide is actually the liquid scent. It's actually the liquid scent. It's actually able to absorb water from the atmosphere. Now, therefore, to keep the mixture dry, basically, we require a drying agent. We require a drying agent. In this particular case here, we are going to have calcium 
oxide. We're going to have calcium oxide. So basically here, uh, what we're going to have uh, is uh, when we have this, what happens is the CH3 here, uh, the CH3 here takes up this hydrogen here, and we're going to have the CH4, which is methane, and then the other one, the, 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 the remaining part gives us the sodium carbonate. That's what we are talking about. That's what we're talking about. Therefore, uh, basically what you can say here is that if you happen to have such, if you happen to have a, a, an alkanoid, any alkanoid, if you happen to have any alkanoid, uh, then uh, what uh, it is exactly going to react with sodium hydroxide there, and you're going to get the alkane uh, plus sodium carbonate plus sodium carbonate. So basically, that's what we're talking about. Now, uh, for uh, so generally, uh, we can maybe mention here that uh, if you have such a sodium alkanoid of this formula CNH2N plus one, of course, the COO Na is a sodium alkanoid. We react with the sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. General formula there. Now, when you have this one here, uh, you'll get an alkane. You'll get an alkane. So you get CNH2N plus 2. Look at this here. CNH2N plus 1 plus this hydrogen here gives you CNH2N plus 2. And this one is a general formula for alkane. And then you're going to have the sodium carbonate. That's what it will be. But therefore, all these others will follow the same root we are going to follow the same root and basically uh, that's what we are talking about that's what we are talking about so thank you very much uh, uh let us to get notification for the upcoming uh, revision and practicals and ensure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can be you can be able to get uh, those notifications. So once again, thank you, and God bless.